we got some people coming in and we had a couple links out there so we're going to make sure everyone gets on so we're going to wait till about five after the top of the hour before we dive in so just giving everyone an opportunity to join here all right in respect of time we are going to go ahead and dive into tonight's q a there's still quite a few folks coming on but we will get the conversation rolling Welcome to the Mountain Tough Q&A. We will be doing these on a regular cadence. We did our first one last month. Last month was focused on mental toughness and mindset and the Mindset 1.0 and 2.0 programs in the Mountain Tough app. And every month is going to have a different theme on these Q&As as we do them on a regular cadence. And so Sometimes you might see a program-specific theme. Sometimes it might be spiritual, mental, emotional, or a hunting-related topic. And tonight's theme overall on tonight's Q&A is the new Sandbag 20 program. So our head trainer, Sarah, is here to help me answer training-specific questions and Sandbag 20-specific questions. And for tonight's Q&A, we're more than happy to dive into coaching and programming questions across all the different Mountain Tough programs. But since we just mm-hmm. launched Sandbag 20 around September 1st, there's a lot of questions related to that program in particular. But if you do have a question related to a different program, like preseason, postseason, uh, kettlebell, body weight, any of our other program offerings, we're happy to dive into those as well. And we love doing these Q&As. We get a ton of questions at Mountain Tough through the app itself. So a lot of community members are interacting with us through the app in the comments under each video. We're also looking at a lot of questions in the Facebook community getting a lot of questions sent in over email and phone calls as well. And sometimes we just can't get to everyone and sometimes we can't get to you in a long form answer like you can do in a live. So the live is a great opportunity for us to connect and is a cool opportunity for the Mountain Tough op- uh, community to see each other and lift each other up. Diving into tonight, a few <clears throat> housekeeping items on these Q&As. So if you missed the last one, there's one or two important things to know about these Q&As. We're using Zoom for these, and Zoom has two features to get your questions in front of us. There's Q&A and there's chat, and it's important on these Q&As to put your question in the Q&A box We're not going to be checking the chat box for questions. We're going to be looking at the Q&A box. So a little confusion there at times. Just make sure that you're posting your question in Q&A. And how we run the live is we're going to be looking through the Q&A message board and we're going to be picking out questions. And then we will call on you to rephrase that question in your own words. And so please just stay on mute. We ask everyone stay on mute until we call on you to propose your question. And then you can just click unmute, propose your question, and then we will dive into that topic. Again, just make sure you're using Q&A, not chat. And if you have SB20 specific questions or program specific questions, you can go ahead and start typing those in now. And we're going to start reviewing those as we kick off tonight's Q&A. So go ahead and get your questions in there. The second thing that's important to mention is all of our Q&As are recorded. So tonight's call is recorded. And the main reason that we're doing that is in about two weeks, they are posted onto the podcast store. So the Mountain Tough podcast, we bring on a lot of inspiring guests, especially around the topic of mental toughness. It's available at all the podcast stores, but we're also posting these Q&As there for the folks that miss it. So it will be recorded. We will get it up in the podcast store in a couple of weeks. The last live around mental toughness is actually up there as well. If you guys want to check that one out later, 
but we are going to get started and diving into some of these questions. Um, Diving into the questions, I am going to check one tech issue and see if we can find where the Q&A posts are coming through. Stand by. Boom, here we go. All right, so we are going to dive into the questions coming in from the community. And we are going to dive in to Lance Milstead's question. Lance, you're new to the community. You've done minimal gear on ramp twice, which is awesome, preparing for elk in Colorado. And you're just curious if sandbag training is a good next step. Um, Lance, if you could unmute and let us know what's going on, that would be awesome. Hey, hi. Uh, nice to see you guys again. Thanks again for hosting this. Yeah, I'm actually leaving tomorrow at 2.30 in the morning and starting my drive to Colorado from Maryland. Um, I, I was, uh, I've been doing the mountain tough stuff for about two months now. Um, coming off of Peloton and transitioning to your program. So I really enjoy the workouts. I, I've, I've got the sandbags um, and I'm curious if that's a good next step. I know I'm going elk hunting tomorrow. Uh, well, this weekend, um, but I'm also, I've got a torn ACL. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is it too, too intense for that? Should I wait until after the surgery in the recovery or can I do that for the next 30 days prior to the surgery as you know, to keep strengthening the leg or is it really what I'll tolerate? Thanks Lance. That's a great question. I'll hand it over to Sarah first and then I'll add on my thoughts. Secondly. I think for the new Sandbag 20 program, sorry, <laughs> for the Sandbag 20 program, um, I would consider it an intermediate to elite program. So congratulations on completing on-ramp. It's great. Um, because you have an injury that you're dealing with, I would probably recommend transitioning to a minimal gear foundation first to establish that good groundwork and uh, literal foundation before you go into a little bit more um, like functional mobility, more um, explosive work, things like that, trying to build up that trust with that knee. Um, so that would be, and, and also the minimal gear foundation has a lot of movements that you can regress if need be. And then that sandbag 20 program would be a great conquest after you have surgery. So that's what I would kind of recommend. And not to mention our um, mountain PT section. So after you go through that surgery, um, our mountain PT section will be phenomenal in conjunction with that minimal gear foundation or sandbag 20. Yep. That's awesome. Super. Yeah. Thank you very much. I look forward to partnering with you guys in the future. I'm excited. And thanks again for all you do for us. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to echo the exact same thoughts as Sarah, just, you know, being a little bit careful on that knee with the upcoming surgery. And my first thought as well was to dive into the PT inside of the app. So Tom Walters does all of the physical therapy content currently in Mount Tough Plus, and he's he's one of the most renowned physical therapists in the world. We're just we're just lucky that um, we grew up together and so he films our content and it's some of the best physical therapy content out there. And, and he has a lot of lower body, lower extremity, knee and joint exercises in there to, to keep you healthy. So all mountain toughers should be looking at that, whether it's for prehab or rehab and especially coming out of those surgeries. And a lot of folks that, that are continuing to train relatively hard after those surgeries, you know, they, they bounce back super fast versus people that kind of take it easy for too long. Sweet. We are going to transition through these questions and we're going to dive into the next one from Jaden. Jaden, you were curious why we include box jumps after deadlifts or squats in some of our programs like preseason and preseason prep 2.0. If you could go ahead and unmute, uh, we'll dive into your question. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, I, I've been doing your guys' program since the first preseason prep kind of came out, and I've noticed like there's been a, a lot of changes um, 
in terms of like the intensity and then how you guys vary that. And I was just, like you just said, I was kind of curious where like you guys have seen benefits by incorporating box jumps with, with all of your strength training. Yeah, I can dive in first and then hand it over to Sarah. So we, we did make that shift and we did start adding that, um, probably about two years ago in a lot of testing we were doing here in the lab. And then it made it into our most recent programs because we were so kind of blown away with what we saw through the testing by enco encompassing that explosive work after a very heavy strength movement. And in a traditional old school strength program or a strength day inside of a functional program, you generally wouldn't see that. And the reason is because usually those days are very focused on just pure raw strength. And the testing really showed us that adding that explosive movement kept mountain tough athletes extremely athletic. And so for us being functional hybrid athletes that want to be well-rounded, really good at cardio, really good at strength, but also functionally ready for anything, the explosive box jumps right after deadlifts, or sometimes you see the like power aggressive ball slams right after squats was making all of our test athletes really, really extremely explosive and nimble and agile. And that's what was more important to us than um, giving them some rest in between those supersets was, was building that explosive hybrid athlete. And that's the main reason. Sarah, what else would you add to that? I think on top of that, the combination of doing your strength movement, let's say deadlifts right before box jumps, is where you're doing an explosive movement for strength in the hip extension, and then you have explosive hip flexion. So having those two combined is really kind of keeping the body balanced. Not only that, but um, just like Dustin said, as we've really gone through um, the ringer and testing those explosive movements. Traditionally, it's called contrast training, right? You do a strength movement and then you do a similar movement um, just for max explosiveness. Um, we have found that a lot of us, especially as we age, we stop training explosively, right? And those fast twitch muscle fibers are the first to go when we age. So just incorporating kind of a safe plyometric movement, whether it's lunge jumps, box jumps, you know, we're not necessarily setting a requirement of height. So even if you can do just a small, small box and then slowly build, excuse me, build, you're going to see that benefit and keep those fast twitch muscle fibers still letting your body know that you need those. So not only are you performing explosive hip extension right before explosive hip flexion, but you're also keeping those fast twitch explosive movements incorporated into your program with minimal risk. And so, um, and as we get older, that becomes more and more important. For sure. And it, you'll see in like preseason prep 2.0 that, it's not a lot of reps on like the box jumps Correct. intentionally. So most of the time you're going to see five reps and we're asking you for max height and it's not a rush. You're not trying to jack your heart rate. You're really mm -hmm. just trying to work on that, that explosive fast twitch muscle fiber. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome question, Jaden. Jaden, just out of, out of curiosity, how have you been feeling after making that transition and doing some of those box jumps in the more recent programs? Um, I've noticed just throughout, like when, whenever I kind of get to the ruck day, I just feel awesome. Like just really, um, I don't feel tight. I don't, I just feel really strong. That's awesome. That day. That's great. Yep. Staying balanced. Yep. And so nothing is, you know, nothing kind of puts you off when you're out in the mountains and rucking. So we're kind of trying to attack it from every angle. Thanks, Jaden. Awesome. That Appreciate it. That is an awesome question. We're going to move on to our next question. And there's a bunch of new participants on the line. And just so all participants know, we're looking in the Q&A message board for questions, not chat. So make sure you don't type them in chat. Type any questions you have pertaining to programming, coaching, or the SB20 sandbag training program in the Q&A board. And we will work our way through those. The next one is from Johnny. Johnny Curtis, a newbie to the Mountain Tough community, 
almost done with on ramp, and was curious if you should, you should jump straight into sandbag or not. Johnny, if you could unmute and let us know a little bit more background, that'd be awesome. Johnny. There we go. There Can we you go. Hear me? Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Yeah. No, I'm just, uh, uh, just, just discovered you guys recently and almost done. Um, I, I ruck between, um, doing the on-ramp days. So in my, my work is very active. Uh, I clean windows. So very, very physical. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not able to keep up with, uh, every other day program. Um, but I was just kind of perusing the programs and trying to make a decision for what, what to do next. I would say if you've um, felt really good with the on-ramp program and because you have a very active, you know, career, the sandbag, I will say, is a big taxer of the central nervous system. So just be mentally prepared if you do decide to do sandbag next, that um, that it is a pretty hefty serving of, of you know, functional strengths. It's supposed to wear you out. Um, it's supposed to kind of really challenge you. Um, my advice is far as progressing from on-ramp, it really kind of depends on the confidence that you're feeling, right? If you feel confident using uh, body weight or just minimal gear, dumbbells, step, things like that, then stick with it. Get as confident as you possibly can. If you're ready for that transition to moving with a load that's a lot more awkward, a lot more challenging on the central nervous system, requires coordination, a little bit more stability, then that is your, that's the personal choice. Now, that being said, you can, you can do sandbag 20 with a 20 pound sandbag, right? So we would love to you know, it, encourage people to, if you want to do it, absolutely do it. Um, but just be ready for um, some pretty tough workouts. I mean, it's a combination of sandbag and kettlebell. So just make sure to start according to how you feel. So on ramp to sandbag is a big jump depending on the weight you're using. Um, but all throughout our programs, you're going to see the same bread and butter movements, right? Your squats, your lunges, your rows, your pressing overhead, you're pushing um, good functional core, athletic movements, um, all those things. So it's a really, it's a personal choice of how confident you feel. But dumbbells are always going to be a little bit easier to handle um, and manage than a sandbag. So Yeah, I totally agree. Like um, moving to SP20 is a pretty big jump. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more of a intermediate and elite level program coming off on ramp, but there's nothing wrong with like giving it a shot with a lighter sandbag. Mm -hmm. And also Johnny, there's, there's just some other really great options for you as well. So with your career being really active and with your training schedule being more of a three day a week training schedule, the minimal gear dailies would be an excellent option. Yeah. Um, that program is a fresh workout in the app every single day, five days a week. Mm -hmm. And so they're posted in the app and then they expire 24 hours later and they're always fresh. It's always fully coached. So fully coached, similar to the on-ramp program. And then it just requires a little bit of gear. And then on a three day a week schedule, you would make three fresh MGDs per week. They'd always be different and changing. And there's a couple athletes on camera to keep up with. And so that could be a really yeah. good transition point as well. For sure. Awesome, Johnny. Thanks for that question. We are going to continue on down the board. The next question is from Bill. Bill, we're going to go to you. You're just looking for an mm -hmm. overview of SB20. Um, but if you could unmute and let us know a little background, then we'll dive in. Thank you. Um, your program is great. I've done the minimal gear foundation probably four times now. Um, I did the uh, on ramp once after having COVID a few months ago, and that got me back into it. Great. I've been looking at the minimal gear daily 
I mean, I don't have the ability to do the pull up bar part as of yet. So I've done a few of those exercises um, with that don't include the pull ups and wanted to know, A, is there something I can do when part of that program is the pull ups to do a substitute? And then looking at the new Sandbag 20, I feel like I'm ready to do that. Um, just didn't know how intense it would be looking at, you know, I, I did the overview that you guys posted and, and it looks really great. Um, I'm a little bit older and not sure if that's something I should do or not. Yeah, absolutely. So minimal gear dailies, my go-to substitution is there's two, two options. You can drop down into, so for every round of pull-ups, or let's say it calls for five chin-ups, you can drop down and hit either our Superman movement um, I would, if you have access to your weight, if you do have dumbbells or a kettlebell, assumingly if you have min uh, minimal gear and you're doing every other movement, just doing a single arm row or double arm row. Okay. So we want to make sure the whole concept of chin-ups and pull-ups is we're getting a nice pull, a nice row movement, right? So a chin-up pull-up vertical pull. So getting some sort of back exercise. So you're looking at single arm row, double arm row, supermans. Um, or even dropping down into a renegade row, right, with, with your set of dumbbells. So you have a couple options there, but using a little bit of weight is going to be ideal since chin-up and pull-up is meant to challenge, um, challenge your strength, right? And then um, number two, um, exactly what I said before. Dive into sandbag 20, but just don't grab that 60 to 70 pound sandbag, right? Mm -hmm. If you're curious about it and you want to try it out, heck yeah. Like dive into it, see if it's something you can do. The movements are a little bit more advanced, but once again, they the program incorporates that bread and butter. So we're doing um, a lot of carries. Um, we're the first day. I mean, it's a ton of back squats. We are, um, you know, incorporating core. We're incorporating a lot of kettlebell work, some fun structures. So it's a really great progression, not only for your the mental grind of it, but um, but it's also very regressible or progressible depending on your on your level. So start with that 30 to 40 pound sandbag. And then once you feel comfortable, you say, hey, I can do this carry with a 60 pound sandbag, you know, and two weeks ago I could do it with a 40. So we really want people to dive in, see if you can do it. And if not, you step back and you go and revisit um, some of the programs that you feel confident with. I think a big benefit of SB22 is it does build a pretty strong back with the sandbag without a pull-up bar. So it is one of our few yeah. programs without a pull-up bar. And so the bent over rows and the single arm rows through the kettlebell in that program can and will keep, keep your back really strong without that access to the pull-up bar. And it's one of the huge advantages of SB20. It's not for everyone, but for the people that are looking for a program where you can train anywhere at any time, it's it's definitely one of the go-to because you could have the sandbag and the kettlebell in your truck and you could do those workouts at a different location every time where a lot of people are kind of they're kind of pigeonholed in a home gym or a gym where they're working out in the same location each time on some of our other programs. SB20 really is the most versatile one where you could do it in any location that you have that, that sandbag, a step up box and that kettlebell. The other thing I was going to add, Bill is over the years, one of the, the greatest things that we've seen to create back strength in home gyms that don't have a pull-up bar is a version of the TRX strap. So the TRX strap is usually easier to install in a home, like in a room where you don't have a pull-up bar. And so they usually come with the ceiling anchor and there's a lot of versions of those now. There's like a lot of brands making similar straps that aren't quite as expensive the TRX one's definitely pretty bomber, but you can do all of those plank rows from a TRX in a living room, or they have like the door jam attachment where you can really get that strong pull yeah. motion. And using your body weight for resistance, that would be optimal. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a great addition to look into. 
Thank you. And I, I just want to say that I really like the coaching sessions. Um, those do, I, I do a lot better with those than the ones that are the, the list. And then I have to do it on my own. So those coaching sessions are great. And, and any of those you want to add be awesome. So great. thank you for doing those. Yeah. Our pleasure. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah. That's a awesome point as well. Yeah. Bill is across all of the mountain tough programs. There are about 50% of them that are coached and there's about 50% of them that are self-guided. And then about 50% of them are gym based gear programs. And then 50% are no gear or minimal gear. And it's really interesting now that our community has grown. When we interview the community, it's always about a 50% split of a lot of people prefer coached but a lot of people prefer self-guided. And so once you find that sweet spot for yourself, I would stick to that path. So moving from on-ramp, which is a coached program, to SB20 would be self-guided. So something like the MGDs could be a better fit for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. We're going to continue on diving into some more questions here. Uh, we'll go to Daniel. Daniel was just hit by a tree doing disaster relief. Sorry, Daniel. And broke an arm, shoulder, and tweaked a knee. Um, Daniel, if you could unmute, let us know what's going on, and then we'll dive into your question here. Um, hey, yeah. I just uh, just wondering about rehab. Um, been getting stronger and up until this um uh, accident and now uh i don't want to i'm concerned about my shoulder getting frozen and and um just uh yeah not sure where to go from here it seems like a big mountain climbing uh, i'm 42 but this is the first time i've ever had a like a serious crazy injury pack like you know collapse lungs and hospitals and stuff like that and man um, uh, yeah, so I I'm not out of the fight. Still working, uh, still moving, but um, just looking for some guidance on where to go from here. And I live in a really rural area, so like, um, you know, access to really high quality gyms or PT is just not reality. Um, it's like a three hour round trip to go to a doctor. Crazy. <laughs> so you know, live in the mountains, great, but and get some weird stuff going on. Did you have a professional physical therapist clear you for training again? Um, this happened like 10 days ago, so I still have still another. Still in the woods. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, my orthopedic guy said that I need to keep moving, but not too much moving. And, um, you know, <laughs> like you should start PT on your shoulder, but don't because it's broke. Uh, you know, like <laughs> you should do what you can, but you can't do anything because you can't breathe very well. And we're worried about pneumonia. So like, uh, I mean, I have a couple weeks till I can really get back to it. Um, and I, you know, like, so yeah, that's just where I'm at and, and just looking for some, like I said, some guidance on yeah. what some, some good, good steps are from maybe somebody who has been through a pretty rough yeah. accident or, or injury like that. For sure. Yeah. Sarah, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are, well, first and foremost, we obviously want you to, you know, hopefully find a professional team to clear you and get you a good system with PT. Our Mountain PT section addresses joint by joint, um, you know, rehabilitation techniques and things like that for chronic pain. Obviously, you have a lot more going on than that. So before we kind of guide you through um, one of our physical workout programs. I mean, you've been through a lot. I think my first thought when um, hearing your story is to visit our mountain mindset. I think, you know, what you're going through is an extremely tough when you want to start moving, you want to start making forward progress, but you're physically limited. So the one thing you can work on is that mental resilience. So Phil uh, Cornerchuk you know, we're only as great as our mind allows us to be. So I think that would be definitely worth checking out. He just gives all of us tools, 
not just to crush mountains, but to just live a more abundant life. And we, when you go through a journey or a tragedy like you have, you have to stay strong. And then when you're ready to move, we'll be there for you for the physical aspect of that. So my first reaction and, and pull is towards that mountain mindset program that we've provided yeah, for our I, community. That is an amazing recommendation because Phil Cornerchuk that created that program, he's been through a tremendous amount of injuries and surgeries. He's like a robotic man, yeah. um, a lot of metal parts. And he is a huge believer in like if you're – right if your right arm is in a cast <clears throat> you train your left arm <laughs> and you just find a way to to keep fighting and keep moving and he has two programs in the app so mindset 1.0 and then it goes right into mindset 2.0 and 1.0 is a prerequisite so you'd knock that one out first and it the whole purpose of that program is just forging that mindset on on purpose and resilience and overcoming adversity. And I think if you knocked those out each day, it's a video a day for 10 days in a row for 1.0 and then 10 days in a row for 2.0 in conjunction with doing as many of the mountain PT movements as possible. I think that daily movement and that daily regimen and working on your mind and body at the same time that would that would be an excellent pathway. Yeah. And then on top of that, when you are ready, um, a good transition back into movement and mobility is that mountain movement section. So Heather, our yogi master that comes in and films phenomenal, um, flows through it. So what you're going to need to start doing first when you are cleared by your physical therapist or your or your doctor is to start making sure your body is moving properly and you're feeling good um, and the joints have proper range of motion, which you're probably going to have some hiccups along the way. But if you hit that mountain mindset and um, start slow with that mountain movement, then like I said, we'll be waiting for you on the other side there. For sure. Yeah. Right on, right on. Thanks, guys. Yeah. That's uh, that's some good stuff, and I'll definitely be uh, working through the mountain tough mindsets. Uh, it's something, a little structure for the day because I'm used to going, 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 and now I'm sitting, sitting, sitting. Yeah. It's that's hard. Really <laughs> that's so hard. Well, best Sorry. of luck. Thanks for thanks for All right. joining I really in. Really appreciate it. Yeah, just keep crushing it. Yeah, just do do those daily movements and just. Don't don't rest too much. Just keep keep grinding. Right on. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Awesome question. We're going to transition to the next one here. The next one is from Miguel's iPad Pro. Um, but the question is: Do you have any programs you would recommend for pregnant women? So, if you are still on the line and could unmute and give us some background information, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Hey. Um, so my wife is currently 17 weeks, and uh, we were doing on ramp. We're new to Mountain Tough, but uh, we were doing on ramp, and uh, she wasn't too comfortable doing the Supermans. And so yep. that's why we we're wondering, like, oh, is there either something that uh, that would like be able to substitute like certain workouts for her, or or should she just skip doing those, or I don't know exactly if you guys have something. Because I know you mentioned on ramp, like, oh, you know, I just came off of pregnancy. Yeah. I was like, dang, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. It's crazy what you, you don't expect to have to modify so many things. But yeah, once you, once you don't want to be on your tummy, um, there's a few things. But um, first and foremost, if your wife would like to reach out to Mountain Tough Support and just list a few exercises she needs immediate recommendations for, I'd be more than happy to. Um, as far as a substitution for Superman's, if she doesn't want to be on her tummy, she could just be on all fours and just extend one arm at a time, right? Um, so she can do that. And any of the core movements um, when you are pregnant, so just make sure she um, she can steer clear of any um, movements that are severe extension or flexion. So 
planks are okay. okay. Side planks are okay. Um, things like that. And also one of my go-to, uh, go-to substitutions or alternatives for pregnant women for core movements is just hit that wall sit hit oh, that yeah. wall sit. Okay. So yeah. So when in doubt, if you're crushing the core section of a, of an exercise, just tell her to go sit on that wall. Um, or once again, <laughs> some hip bridges. Um, so, so that's going to work her core, uh, side planking is totally fine. It's just keeping that mid and lower back really strong. Um, but yeah, avoiding any extension flexion in that rectus abdominis, which is like our six pack muscles. And then, yeah, obviously she's not wanting to lay on her tummy. So just anything on her tummy, just pop up onto hands and knees and um, try to emulate that same movement just in that quadruped position. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely uh, let her know about that. Yeah. And she can reach out to me directly at Sarah at mountain tough.com too. If she needs any extra help. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely tell her that. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no thank kidding. you. That's thank awesome. You yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. She's still training hard. Too. I know. It's sweet. That's the key. It's so hard. It's, I was so, I, every day I said, I'm so blessed to be in a community that, you know, I'd want to go home and take a nap and they would just <laughs> force me to work out every day, even if it was for 20 minutes. And if I could say one thing to any of you, um, you know, husbands out there is get your wife moving, keep her moving as much as you can. It doesn't have to be tough. It just has to be something. So Helps with everything. Everything. Thank you. That's a phenomenal question. We are going to move on to Mike. Mike Ponton, do you think sandbag over steel bar training is less impact and better for longevity? If you could unmute, give us some background on that question. We'll dive in. Hey, guys. Hey, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, about my third iteration, I uh, went through a couple on ramps, went through a couple foundations, uh, hit a struggle, uh, got doing the, <laughs> it's like the guy for doing the step ups, had a pull, uh, kind of recovered kind of thing, moving back in. Um, this question is, you know, the, the, the kettlebells with the sandbag kettlebells, they seem to be a lot more flexion, a lot more easy on the joints, a lot more. I mean, is that part of the thought process you guys have had? Is that part of the the, I mean, do you recommend that over that? Because uh, I went with I went with the the sandbag kettlebells instead of the steel ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see, you guys seem to do a lot of uh, single arm stuff. No, not a lot of barbell stuff. So I'm um, thinking stabilization stuff. Uh, is that part of that thought process of, of the sandbags and that stabilization and less uh, impact on your joints? Over. Yeah, I could dive in first on that one and then hand it to Sarah. I. That's an excellent question. My opinion would be that like one kind of training isn't necessarily better than the other. And so like using your barbells for a pure strength phase is, is a phenomenal way to go. And then using sandbags when you want to create a lot more functional functionality in yourself is the way to go. And so like training, is nice to look at like through a calendar year based on your specific goals and then using these different blocks to reach those different goals. And so for most of our athletes that have access to gym equipment, they are going to go through a strength phase. Uh, mostly a hunter is going to do that in the postseason. And so they're going to try to pack on a lot of strength in November, December, January, and then they're going to try to um, pack on a lot of cardio and endurance in the spring. And this is kind of like a new tool in the toolbox where the SB20 is an excellent opportunity to really increase your athleticism, your agility, uh, your core strength, your grip strength, and overall like extreme functional fitness. We, we talk a lot about it in the lab especially through all the testing of SB20 is there's just, there's nothing quite like sandbag training. So if you're looking for something exciting and new to kind of shock the system and really boost that athleticism, it's the way to go. And so it's not like one is better than the other. It's like, this is a great tool in the toolbox 
to, to build a whole new side of yourself through the sandbag. And we could always, we could always notice that in testing where if you have like a 45 pound barbell overhead and you're doing some sort of movement, it is rel relatively pretty easy. But if you put a 45 pound sandbag overhead, it is extremely difficult doing that same movement. And it's just those stabilizers in that awkward, unbalanced movement that, that kind of takes this program to a whole new level. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of piggyback on what Dustin mentioned, barbell work is, you know, imperative. Like if you want to establish absolute strength, there's no way you're going to get a sandbag heavy enough to really max out the total kinetic chain as far as strength of picking up a heavy object off the floor. Now, when it comes to sandbag and kettlebell, you mentioned all of our single arm, single leg work. That's, it's super important because as humans, we are all asymmetrical, right? We have one shoulder that's a little bit stronger than the other. We have one side that's a little tighter than the other, one hip that's not as strong or whatever it is. So we have to train and address those asymmetries. And so we do that with, you know, single leg training, single side training, isolateral work, things like that. And then um, something that cannot, I mean, obviously barbell work is going to work your core, but moving an awkward, an awkward weight from your left side up to your right shoulder, there's nothing quite like sandbags to tax your core, you know, mm -hmm. and I always say our core is our bridge. It's our bridge between our lower extremities and our upper extremities. And we want to keep that bridge nice and strong. It transfers force from down to high. So, um, yeah, the answer is all of the above. I think, you know, like he said, a well-rounded ebb and flow through your calendar year is super important depending on your goals. Now, you could train sandbag all year long, um, but I think, um, you know, when you get your elk, you're packing it on, you're going to wish you were a little bit stronger when you're you know, having to yep. get into that deep hip flexion and, and climb up. So you're going to be able to handle that core, but being strong is one of the most, is biggest, is one of the biggest indicators of, um, uh, avoiding injury. So being strong is important and being functional is important. And that's why we kind of give a good array of our different programs because we believe in it all. <laughs> Great. Hey, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome question. We're going to transition to Sam. Sam, looks like you started Mountain Tough this year, first time in your life in the gym, dove into the pre-deployment program, and you noticed those really long workouts that are in that program. Um, if you could unmute and dive into what's going on, and we'll help answer your question the best we can. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Hey, first of all, thank you to you guys. I really love the app and uh, like being first time in the gym and uh, suddenly looking at the app, it initially felt really tough, but I was able to at least do the gym foundation program. So nice. uh, going to my question, basically, yeah, the, the, the like I fi feel really tired uh, when I'm doing strength days. So I take some amount of break between those blocks and even uh, like between those reps. And that is why I think it is taking more than two hours, but uh, doing two hours long-term, I feel is going to be tough uh, with the work I have. So I'm wondering like, first of all, did I choose the right program uh, as pre-deployment for these long backpacking trips? And uh, second is like, you know, are, are you guys building anything which is going to take less than one hour for people like me? Yeah, awesome question, Sam. I think that that's probably just a case of we probably in, unintentionally guided you to the incorrect program. So pre-deployment is one of the most elite programs that we offer inside of the app. And so pre-deployment was, was built with special operations. It was a program that we worked on for, for multiple years to be kind of one of most, our most hardcore programs we offer in the app from a self-guided full gym program. And so I would 
probably have you back out of that one and just have that one be a goal for you to knock out in a year or two from now. Cause it's certainly something that you can work up to, but this being the first year in the gym for you throughout your life, it's going to be much more effective and safer and healthier to guide you on the correct path. And so we would look at it more from like, what is the next step in that chain? And you, you started on gym foundation or did you start on on ramp? I started on gym foundation. So okay. I completed the, the eight, eight weeks. How did that go? How long were those workouts taking you? Those also took time. Uh-huh. Uh, pull-ups are something which are still tough for me. So I'm using the band for the support. Okay. Uh, okay. First one, one and a half week were very tough. But after that, I was able to do it just that. Yeah, I, I used to spend a lot of time in the gym, like two hours for those strength days. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, so gym, gym foundation should be a little bit more manageable than pre-deployment. Like Dustin said, pre-deployment is kind of our top echelon. Um, Workouts are definitely going to take more than an hour. Our gym foundation should be closer to about an hour. So um, if you are just completely taxed and taking closer to two hours for those workouts, maybe pulling back on the weight a little bit and working on those recovery times, um, would probably be a little bit better of a strategy. Um, If it's really taking it out of you every day for two hours, then yeah, taking that step back and maybe maybe doing an on-ramp to build that uh, fundamental cardiovascular endurance um, if that heart rate's getting up too high. Um, So there's a few things that you can do to regress it, to make it a little bit more manageable where you can move through it a little bit better. Um, Because those gym foundation workouts shouldn't take you more than about an hour. Got it. Thanks yep. for the advice. Yeah. And if you have any more questions about that, you know, like I mentioned a few questions ago, always feel free to reach out to support and we can kind of help help you work through that program if it's still taking you a, a little bit of a long time with, you know, specific weights and um, rest intervals and things like that. Okay. Yep. I appreciate right. it. Thank, Thank you. you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. That's an awesome question. And it it's certainly something that we see come up several times throughout the community. And historically, Sam, another thing that I've noticed that works extremely well is going through programs multiple times. And so what we've had great success with is like going through on-ramp two or three times before Mm -hmm. you transition to gym foundation and then going through gym and foundation two or three times as well. And you almost view it as like stick in that one program until you've kind of almost mastered it or graduated out of it where you are kind of hammering those workouts rather than kind of suffering through them. So almost backing out and doing on-ramp two or three times and getting kind of that cardio um, endurance up a little bit and then go to gym foundation, go through it again, and then maybe a second time and you should be feeling a lot better as, as you're going to kind of ramp up in a, in a much more healthier fashion. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. You bet. Little shout out to Joel Sparks. He said, no question, but we rock. And congrats <laughs> on doing all those programs. MGD since they started, which we figured out is about one year. A little, I think, are we, have we hit one year yet? It's like really close. Woo. That's a lot of workouts. <laughs> Joel, are you still on the line? You should unmute and let us know what's shaking. Yeah, I am on the line. I, <laughs> I found you guys, what, spring of COVID, um, COVID when we spring. shut down all the gyms. And uh, yeah, went through, gosh, 30-30 a couple times. Then you guys did 30-30 2.0. And then the heavy pack and then the kettlebell. And then yeah. after I'd kind of done those, you that was about the time you started the MGDs. And that's been, I enjoy the heck out of those. Those are so much fun. Oh, good. That's incredible. We love that feedback. That's awesome. Yeah. They're fun yeah, to keep do. Yeah, those rolling. Those are great. Yeah, we will. We will. We've got, 
We've got some fun stuff uh, stuff coming up. So, but thanks for being with us for a year on those MGDs. Those we, things are awesome. Yeah, yeah, when we started them, we we're like, let's see what happens. Let's see if people <laughs> like these, and like they're taking off, which is exciting. Do you kind of miss Hillary because she always seems to crush everybody? Though I'll say that. Dude, Guess who's Hillary's coming, coming back, back tomorrow? <laughs> she's Good. coming back. Maybe not actually. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna she's gonna kick your tush through the through the screen. Yeah, she's coming back tomorrow. So I think a lot of people are gonna be stoked. Hillary is an animal. She's a oh, she's crazy. She never looks tired, well, no matter how much weight she has. I know. Well, thank you, Joel. We so appreciate you sticking with us. Way to go. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We have about six minutes left. We're going to work through a couple more questions. If you're on the line and you haven't typed your question in Q&A, please do that now. We'll try to get to one or two more before the top of the hour. We do have a hard stop at the top of the hour, and we'll go to Michael. Looks like Michael Cauldron, you had an awesome elk hunt, felt phenomenal, but you are getting a little knee pain. If you could unmute and let us know how that program went, how that hunt went, and kind of how those knees are feeling. Hi, I think you guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing what you do. <laughs> Thanks, um, Michael. Pleasure. Not only at Elk Hunter, I'm a paramedic, and it has helped me so much with my work. But I'm older. I'm 54, and I didn't have any problems on the elk hunt, but I noticed on the workouts, I'm getting some knee pain. So do you have any suggestions on what I should do, how I can ease that up? Um on my arthritic knees. Yeah. So, um, so Michael, when you, um, when your knees are hurting, do you feel like when it's when you're really sore or is it just kind of a general ache that, that gets to you? Um, it's when I'm sore. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, one of the, one of the first go-to things I like to suggest to people when their knees start to get kind of that achy, uh, feeling is foam rolling. So have you ever foam rolled before? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've been doing the foam rolling program. Good. Awesome. Yes. Great. So so keep up with that foam rolling, making sure you're not just hitting those quads, but make sure you're getting the hamstrings, the front of the calf muscle, so the anterior tib, um, getting your calves. Um, and same with, you know, in your programming. So which programs are you doing right now? I, I did the uh, um, preseason prep 2.0. I Great. also did the um, spring training. Okay. Worked into the um, preseason prep 2.0. Great. Okay. Um, so as you progress to preseason 2.0, you um, you'll you've probably noticed we do a lot of really good hamstring work in that program, and that is to make sure we're staying really balanced throughout our posterior chain in relation to our typical um, quad strength. So just keep up with the foam rolling. Make sure those hips are staying really mobile. So adding a little bit of stretching. Normally, achy knee pain um, can be resolved through making sure those muscles stay um, operating properly, length tension relationships. Um, it could be, I mean, if you have typically tight hips, you know, which happens a lot after long miles in the mountains, um, though, though the pain is presenting itself in the knee, it could be in the hips, quads, hamstrings, things like that. So making sure you're digging deep with that foam roller and staying really mobile through the hips. Once again, mountain movement's a great tool for that. Yep. Um, and, um, and yeah, and the team. foam rolling. I believe we have a foam rolling section too. Um, I know we made an Instagram post about it as well. So yeah, there's a five minute foam roll video in the app, yep. which will help a ton. There's going to be some PT movements for knees in the app as well, mm -hmm. and some of that mobility from Heather. Yeah. So Great. thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. I'm getting ready to transition into whitetail hunting soon. All right. Um, Good luck. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks, Michael. So Thanks, Michael. All right. We got time for one more. We got three minutes left. We'll Scott. dive to Kayla. Wait, Kayla. hold on. No question here. Scott <laughs> Kelly. Look forward to cussing Miss Sarah out in my shop every other day. 
All right, Scott, I'll take that any day. You guys can call me, call me any name you want as long as you keep working out. MGDs. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thanks, uh, Scott. <laughs> that is awesome. TS loves MGDs as well. Uh, Kayla, we'll get to you real quick. It looks like you were using heavy pack to train for a summit in Utah. Awesome. Let's hear about that summit. And then you have a question about back strength. Uh, all right. Yeah, so the summit was freaking awesome. And I could feel a lot of the workouts movements that we did helping because the top third of the mountain or so was boulders. So just all the leg stuff was awesome. But I travel, and it's not like I'm traveling in a car or whatever. It's suitcase only, whatever you can have in your suitcase. Um, so sandbags are kind of hard. I've taken some that where you fill with sand or whatever, but there isn't anything. So, But the biggest struggle has been finding pull-up bars. And I've used, like, little kid outdoor, like, <laughs> playgrounds yeah. and whatever. Monkey bars. But, um, anything, <laughs> anything, any ideas on that? Like, um I don't know, like well, upside down, like wall standing, uh, anything that works. My, f <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> my favorite for sure. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the Q and A is the TRX no, strap. The TRX okay. strap, yeah, like is bomber. And just throwing a TRX strap in your suitcase, you, they it comes with a door jam attachment. So you can have the TRX strap, you put the top in a door jam, like in a hotel room, and you can do all your plank rows. And those plank rows are so good for back strength. That's a su okay. super excellent tool. Yeah. The frustrating thing is the doors all tend to open in. I know. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> work out in the hallway. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I want to try it again. I haven't tried that in a long time. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, TRX is definitely the best option. You can always, uh, you know, go crazy on Supermans and things like that. Um, I know that's hard when you're on the road to work back. We, we kind of yeah. always talk about it with uh, minimal gear, uh, you know, programs. It's just hard if you don't have yeah. weight to really strengthen your back. So you got to kind of get creative with it. But that TRX is the best investment you can make if you travel a lot and you want to keep your back um, and all those postural muscles working properly. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, Kayla. Thanks, Kayla. Nice work. All right. We are out of time. It does look like Kenny is just dying for the full run warm up to make it onto the oh, yeah. app. Yep. That's funny. We actually are. <laughs> Kenny, are you using that all the time from Instagram? Uh, I, it got me to sign up to come join you guys. I just can't follow it because you went through it so fast. I would just <laughs> love the full thing. It's awesome. Thank you for that. And thank you for this group and this community. I love it so far. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we can get that in that. Yep. I know. We were actually just talking yesterday. We're going to put another one out there, but I'll try to slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks everyone for joining. We really appreciate you guys taking time out of your evenings to make these Q and A's. It is phenomenal. We will try to reach out to anyone personally. If your question wasn't answered, we can see them here in the Q and A. And so if anyone has an unanswered question, we'll try to get back to you guys as quickly as we can. Um, but we just love you guys. These will be going on a regular cadence. We're not sure the theme of the next one, um, but we'll change the theme each time so that we can answer your questions holistically and just keep crushing it out there. Yeah. Thanks guys. We really appreciate your time and we appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to, to kind of become members in your household for an hour this evening. So <laughs> we appreciate it. And yeah, if you guys ever have any questions, just write into Mountain Tough Support and we'll be right there for you. All right. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Have Thanks. a great night.